Hello and welcome to Wines of the World. My name is Anthony Metzger. I'm a winemaker and certified sommelier. Here at Wines of the World, I interview winemakers from all over the planet. I conduct my interviews via Skype and record them live so that I can bring you face to face with winemakers from all over the world. So without further ado, please enjoy the show. Well, Lucas, welcome to the show, Wines of the World. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, my pleasure. So you're a winemaker in Austria. How did you become a winemaker? Actually, I did the exam to become a chef and a waiter. So I'm from hospitality management. And then I fell in love with wine and food in particular. And then I decided to go to university to study enology and viticulture. Here in the U.S., you know, we see the Bordeaux wines, we see the German wines, we see New Zealand mm-hmm. wines, Austrian wines, however, we don't see too many of. And so yeah. we just don't know too much about it. A lot of people wouldn't even know that they make wine in Austria. What Tell us shame. a little. Yeah, I know, right? I've had the pleasure to try it and it's delicious and I like it a lot. So what would you yeah, tell uh, American people that don't know much about or anything about Austrian wines? What, what do you have to tell them about your wines? So our wines are normally very easy drinking wines mm-hmm. uh, to be drunk in good company and with food. Our wines are definitely uh, wines which have to be drunk with food. They are. Okay. So, they are. so our culture is like you go to a bar or to a Heurigen. You know what a Heurigen is? No. Um, okay, it's like a very rustical restaurant, okay. countryside. You got cold dishes and you got wine, basically. And you just like ham, um, bread, butter, cheese. And with that, you drink the easygoing wine. It's amazing. Yeah. And well, the thing is, probably the people should come to us and visit us. And if they don't have the chance, they just uh, buy a good bottle of Cuneo Vatlina. That's our main white variety. Okay. And some good bread, some ham, and some cheese, and eat it with that, with some good friends, and that's it. That's the Austrian spirit. <laughs> so you can have a little Austrian spirit with here, within here in the U.S. So you sit down at the table with family, friends, countryside preferably, okay. open up some yeah. of this wine, and then you have it with like charcuterie, like the, the meats and the cheeses yeah. and the bread. Exactly, like, uh, like an apéro in France. Like which one? Uh, apéro. Oh, you like know. an apparel. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. And that's it's just like that. And that's a good representation of the Austrian culture, wine culture. Yep. Perfect. Yep, absolutely. And yeah. also a very important thing is our wines are meant to be drunk together. So mm. the Austrian way of life is a very a very friendly one. We're quite nice people. We mm-hmm. we have, we like to have fun. We like to have fun together. We like to drink together. So nice. it's pretty meant to be drunk together, not alone. Nice, nice. How long have you been a winemaker then? Um, bum, 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 three years. Three years? And what is it yeah. What is it that you love about winemaking most? Why do you want to be a winemaker instead of being a chef or instead of doing anything else that you could do? You want to be a winemaker, so what is it that you love about it so much? Um, I, I love it that I can create a product which perfectly reflects its origin. I, I love the French concept of terroir. I'm really a terroir person. I love this concept. And that's why I love wine, because I love it to create, a, let's say, a wine and say, okay, this wine reflects perfectly like this street, this 20, what, 20 hectares of somewhere. Sure. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, that's a really good point, because, you know, even the places I've traveled, I was in South Africa, and I'm talking to winemakers down there, and I asked them this question, too, and they said that, just what you said that the wine represents place and that Mm -hmm. you could be here in the U S open up a bottle of Austrian wine and you're literally Mm -hmm. consuming parts of like a piece of Austria and you're opening up the countryside, if you will. And it's like you said, it represents place and that's pretty cool. Yeah. Actually, when I travel around the world to visit my friends, I always bring a bottle of wine and they bring a bottle of wine because we sit them together and say, oh, that's cool. You brought the wine. And, ah, I can remember. We sat there in the middle of the wine as we ate. Oh, it was amazing. Like that. It's, yeah. That, very cool. That, that's the point. That's I'm with you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. What about wine and stories? Is there any other wine stories that you have to share? Um, always with wine and my friends, we sit together, yeah. we eat. We joke around and I love this atmosphere. Yeah. Wine is able to create so much atmosphere. That's why I also why 
um, I choose the, this metier at first because sure. I, I worked as a waiter and then you see like, oh yeah, the people get so happy when you give them good wine and stuff and I say, okay, I want to do this. I want yeah. to make wine and make people smile. Nice. So, yeah. Basically. Perfect. Another thing here we do on the show is we do scenario questions. I ask winemakers what kind of wine would you drink in a certain scenario. And okay. here I want to ask you, you know, it's it's a chilly autumn day in Austria and you're mm -hmm. going to go hiking and backpacking into the mountains and you're actually going on a camping trip for the okay. weekend, two nights, three yeah. nights in the mountains camping. Mm -hmm. You're bringing your girlfriend or your wife. Okay. What kind of wine are you going to bring on this camping trip? Mm, I probably bring some bottles of red wine. Okay. Because because in the mountains, as you said, it's chilly. Yeah. Red wine with some warm. You can look the panorama and yeah. drink some nice red wine. Also some white wine because when you go hiking, you can collect mushrooms. You can do fishing, and that's actually quite nice with white wine. Oh, also wow. with cooking campfire. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah, catch your fish. Pick your mushrooms and cook a dish and have white wine out in the mountains. That'd be nice. Do the Austrian people mostly drink Austrian wines or is there a big outside influence too as far as like, can you go to the grocery store and buy a Napa Valley cab? Can you go buy, a, you know, a, a Rioja wine or a New Zealand wine? Uh, with Napa Valley it would be complicated because usually we don't have that many Australian or US wines. Okay. But um, European wines, no problem. Spain, sure. Italian, French, in the last years also more and more German. But m the most wines consumed are Austrian. Okay, okay. Well, that makes sense. You guys make some good stuff over there. so. Exactly. Yeah. So we don't export too much. The, most of the stuff is drink inside, drunk inside this country. Yep. So another scenario question for you is you're going to go into the mountains of Austria again. But this time you're going skiing. You're going on a day trip for some skiing, some big mountains. Okay. You're gonna, you want to bring some wine with you either in like a little flask or in like a plastic bottle. You want to bring some wine so you can have some wine while you're skiing on the mountain for the day. What kind of wine would you bring skiing? Um, I would bring some port. Some port. Okay, yeah, good choice. Yep. That would be nice. It's high in alcohol, high in sugar, yep. tasty. Yep. Yeah, that'd be a nice match. All right, very cool. And then um, I usually end with this one question, and that is if you could drink a bottle of wine with anybody mm -hmm. on earth or anybody yeah. from the past, from history, yeah. who would you drink a bottle of wine with and what wine would you drink with them? The Philippe Baron de Rothschild. Oh, wow. Who did <laughs> would do great efforts for the Bordeaux wine. Yeah. So actually, my one of my personal heroes. Nice. Okay. Very cool. Okay. And what what would you talk with him about? The development in the wine industry, yeah. a bit about the Terra concept, yeah. something about quality assurance, viticulture. Yeah. Just Try to get his vision. Just, yeah. Exactly. What is so Friday night over there in Austria? What do uh, young people do for fun in Austria on a Friday night? Um, you go out with your friends, drink wine, eat cheese, have fun, yep. dance a lot. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Sounds like Minnesota yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's we actually... a little more beer here, but you know, we're getting there. Yeah, we also drink beer, yeah, but yeah. we as winemakers, we have to drink wine. Right. I mean... Yeah, you have to represent. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. we have to represent something. <laughs> Alright, well thank you Lucas for being on the show today. Have a nice evening. Yeah, Bye. you too, Lucas. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Wines of the World. Make sure you check in next week as I will be interviewing another winemaker. If you have any questions that you would like me to ask a winemaker during any of my interviews, just reach out to me through my social media accounts, which you can find on my website, winesoftheworld.info. Be sure to check my website tomorrow and every single day of this week as I will be releasing some really fun, interesting wine stories. Thank you, and please be sure to subscribe.